Good evening. The controversial Rabbi Meyer Kahana in Newton tonight for a fundraiser attracted an angry crowd outside the temple. Kahana, American-born, wants to be Prime Minister of Israel. He would have all Arabs shipped out of Israel. Such radical views have some fellow Jews calling him a bigot. News Center 5 tonight, Susan Warnick with our first report. Everyone at Temple Bethel in Newton tonight was upset about something. The demonstrators were unhappy because the controversial rabbi, Meyer Kahane, was invited to speak inside at a fundraiser. Basically, I think he's the equivalent of, uh, of Hitler. Um, he wants to kill all the Arabs. The people who were paying $50 a head to hear Kahane speak were distressed by the demonstrators. I don't know what those, pe those demonstrators really think the solution is. They never gave me a solution to the Arab problem in Israel. The people who live around Temple Bethel were displeased by everyone. I can't go out of my own house. I'm blocked in because of all this. There was an incredible scene when Kahane arrived. <laughs> Kahane could have driven right up to the front door of the temple. Instead, he opted to walk, exacerbating the situation. <laughs> Newton police, some 60 strong, kept the sides apart. Despite the display, there was no trouble. Kahane was undaunted. I've never worried about what Jews thought. I'm not on this earth to make Jews feel, feel good. I'm here on this earth, as all Jews should be, to make Jews think. Though tonight's event was the subject of several news releases, organizers, apparently at the last minute, decided to close it to the media. Next time he's in Boston, I'm sure if it's a speech, we'll let you in. But in this particular function, it's not a speech, and we feel that we just want privacy. Rabbi Kahane spoke privately to about 130 supporters in the temple tonight without incident. The demonstrators went home satisfied. The people who run Temple Bethel were anxious tonight to point out that the Kahana affair was simply a function at the synagogue and not necessarily endorsed by it. They claim they didn't even know until recently that Kahana was coming. But the organizers of tonight's event say the temple was rented last July for a fundraiser for Israel's extremist cock party. <laughs> Today, the issue that we have, again, pushed and forced among the Jewish community and indeed the national and international media is the question of Western democracy or a Jewish state. And again, it was done largely by one man who never gave up, and I think that's part of the attraction of Rabbi Kahana that he is willing to keep pushing and pushing no matter what the odds. And he is fighting tremendous odds, and it's a tremendous struggle. I think all of us here deserve a little bit of credit because as rare, rare a phenomenon is to be a hero, I think a second rare phenomenon is to be able to recognize heroism and greatness. Ladies and gentlemen, Rabbi Kahana. In the year 1938, Zev Jabotinsky visited Vilna in Poland. Jabotinsky, the greatest of the Zionist leaders, came to speak to the Jews of Vilna about his desperate plan to appeal to those Jews to flee while they still could. And his message was, Eden are firebrand, Jews a fire is burning. Liquidate the exile before it liquidates you. The Jewish Socialist Bund, the leftist anti-Zionist, put out a flyer in Yiddish 
which we've translated to English. To the Jewish workers and Jewish masses of Vilna, the spiritual father of Jewish fascism, Vladimir Jabotinsky, is coming to Vilna. <laughs> Jewish workers and Jewish masses of Vilna, show your contempt for him. Come out and demonstrate. Down with fascism, down with Jabotinsky. Nothing has changed. In the 1930s, Jabotinsky was the fascist. When I was a youngster, I remember the 1940s, Begin was the fascist. And today in the 1980s, Kahane is the fascist. And always by the same groups, the same groups who in the 1930s, by their failure to recognize the danger of Hitler and the Holocaust, were responsible in such great measure for the death of six million. Those of you who came with me into this building earlier, saw the faces of hate. Those who walked with me saw a number of Israelis, their faces twisted with hate. I saw those faces last month in Givatayim the town of Givatayim in Israel. But we held a rally and more than 10,000 Jews were bussed in from the kibbutzim. They came with iron bars. They came with stones. They came to try and kill Jews. And just the previous month, at our first rally in Givatayim, the mayor, the Labor Party mayor, shouted, and this was the headline in the papers, La rogotam kishem ktanim, kill them while they're still small. Can you imagine if I would have made that statement? They attacked my car, smashed the windows. If the police hadn't come at the last moment, they wanted to lynch me. And as I saw the faces of the kibbutzdikim, of the leftists, I saw something else. I saw 40 years ago the faces of those Jews who were part of the period known in Israel as Hasizon, the season, the hunting season. In the early 1940s and the middle 1940s, the leftists of Mapai and Mapam, the kibbutznikim, kidnapped Jewish soldiers of the Irgun and the Sternists and handed them over to the British. And to be a member of the Irgun or Sternist was a capital crime, punishable by death. And I remember the youngster, Yedidya Segel, a 17-year-old Jewish boy from Haifa, who was kidnapped by a special group of Haganah and tortured, and he died. The group was under the command of Teddy Kalek. 
I remember, and I saw the faces of hate in Givatayim. And I remember the Irgun ship, Altalena, which in 1948, financed by Ben Hecht, brought tons of military equipment badly needed as Israel struggled for its very life. And as it anchored off the coast, of Tel Aviv, Palmach gave orders to fire on the ship, and 17 Jews were murdered, 17 Irgun soldiers were murdered because Menachem Bacon was on the ship and they wanted to liquidate him. And I remember who the commander of the operation was, and you should know too. His name was Yitzchak Rabin. And I remember what the Prime Minister the next day said in the Knesset, and it's in the minutes. He rose and after the, the murder of 17 Jews said, Ashrei HaTotach HaKadosh. Blessed be the Holy Canon. And a week after the Givatayim, incident. A writer in one of the Israeli papers in an article entitled How Pleasant It Was to See a Violent Left wrote the following To the holy canon that sank the Altalena we can now add the holy stone that smashed the windows of Kahana's car. We are the fascists. We are the hooligans. We who came with a police permit and they who came and stated that they would not allow us to speak. They speak of morality. They speak of democracy. They speak of democracy after what they did to the Sephardic Jews who poured into Israel in 1948. 800,000 Sephardic Jews poured in, into Israel. They were the finest of the Jews. They were Zionists real Zionists, religious Jews, warm Jews, who three times a day for 2,000 years had turned to Jerusalem and prayed, May our eyes behold thy return to Zion. And suddenly there was a Zion and a Jewish state, and they poured out of Algeria and Morocco and Tunis, and Libya, and Egypt, and Syria, and Iraq, and Yemen. And they came home to the Holy Land for which they had prayed for 2,000 years. And the leftists who ran the government looked and asked one question only, the question that meant more to them than the Jewish people and the Jewish state, and the question was, for whom will they vote? 800,000 religious Jews will they vote for the Mapai? And so they set about deliberately to rip from them their Jewishness. Democracy, listen to the democracy of the left when they had the power. Jews were placed in Mabarot, in transit camps. And if one wanted a job, they asked him, are you a member of Istadrut? Do you have the Pinkasa Dome, the little red booklet? 
You are not a member of Histadrut, no job. You are a member of Histadrut, Habibi, we just found for you a job. That was the democracy. They asked, where does your child learn? In what school? The religious school? Hava, no job. And they told them how to get a job. And here is what they told them. They would give him a blank slip. And he would say, take your child and register him or her in the Istadrut school. In those days they had the Zramim, the trends. And have the principal stamp the slip. And then bring the stamped slip of paper to the labor exchange and you will get a job. Democracy. I remember what they did to the Jews of Yemen, the children of Yemen, Yalde Teman. 10,000 children came in 1948 from Yemen to Israel without their parents under the auspices of Youth Aliyah. These were children of Yemenite Jews who for 2,000 years had clung to poverty and persecution to their, their Judaism. Every one of them came to Israel with their Shabbat and their Kashrut and their earlocks that they called their Simanim, their signs. That was the sign of a Jew in Yemen. And they came to the Holy Land and were placed in such holy institutions as Kibbutzim of Hashemer HaTzair. They ripped from them their Shabbat. They ripped from them their Kashrut. They ripped from them their Simanim, their signs. They ripped from them their Jewish values. They ripped from them their self-respect. They told them, Abba u primitivi. Your father is backward. Your mother is primitive. They took from them the only thing that they had, the Jewish values that alone gave them self-esteem and self-pride. They gave them instead the values of Dizengoff Street. I sat in Romney prison with Jewish prisoners, the overwhelming majority of whom were Sfaradim. How many Jewish criminals do you think there were in Morocco when they were in Morocco? How many Jewish prostitutes were there in, in Baghdad? How many murderers and bank robbers in Yemen? So when Shimon Peres gets up with his parasites and talks about Ha'asaf Suf, the riffraff, which is a code name for the Sfaradim who back Kahana. Riffraff? If they are riffraff, who made them so? These people who come from adult communities that gave us the Rambam and the Ramban and the Reef and the great Torah scholars who turned them into criminals. Democracy. For 37 years, we waited for someone to come into the Knesset to give to them exactly as they gave to us. Well, I've arrived. I want a state of Jews, but more than that, I want a Jewish state. I want a state in which young Jews in Israel will know that they are Jews. The bankruptcy of the educational system is horrendous. Young Jews who walk around saying, Ni lo yudi, ni Israeli. I'm not a Jew, I'm an Israeli. For this we waited 2,000 years.
I don't want a school which only puts out a good doctor or a good pilot. I want a school that first of all puts out a good Jew who will be a good doctor and a good pilot. I want Zionism and I want Judaism and I want youngsters to, to know that they are not Israelis but they are Jews who live in Eretz Israel and that they are part of a Jewish people and they have an obligation towards their people and they should know that no I don't marry the shiksa from 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 Sweden who is working on my on on my kibbutz I want youngsters with Jewish pride I want youngsters who each morning rise and say Ashreinu matov chelkeinu Happy are we How good is our lot How magnificent it is to be a Jew We are going to do more than simply change a few laws in Israel We are going to change the face of society in Israel and make Israel not a Hebrew-speaking Portugal, but a Jewish state. <laughs> Last Wednesday, I presented a motion of no confidence in the government over the issue of what we call in Israel Mifgashim, meetings. The Ministry of Education in Israel, under a fool named Navon, <coughs> the Ministry of Education in Israel, in order to combat Kahanism, has implemented a full-scale program, an enforced program, in which every Jewish youngster in every public school in Israel, from the first grade through high school, will visit Arab villages, spend weekends there, and have Arabs visit Jewish towns and spend weekends there. It is a policy which will see joint Jewish-Arab summer camps. If the Federation in Boston were to implement such a program, what would the Jews here say? But it's not in Boston, it's in the Jewish state. It's a program which guarantees assimilation, intermarriage, the spiritual death of the Jewish people. As if we don't have enough of it already. More than 3,500 Jewish women married to Arabs in Israel and more than 10,000 Jewish women living with Arabs without marriage. The prostitutes in Israel are all Jewish. The pimps are mostly Arab. For this, we waited 2,000 years. This was the dream of Shivat Zion, to come to come home to Zion. I remember in Beit Shemesh, a development town near Jerusalem. An elderly Jew, a Moroccan Jew, came up to me and said, I have two daughters. They're both married to Arabs. One lives in the Arab village of Taiba. And then he said, when I was in Morocco, in my blackest nightmare, did I ever dream that my daughter would go out with an Arab I came to the Holy Land to see it happen. It happens every day. The Arab wakes up in the morning in his village and his name is Ibrahim. He comes in the evening to Tel Aviv or Netanya or any other town and suddenly he says, Shalom, my name is Avi. Avi.
You go to the beach in the summertime and you see the, the automobiles parked, license plates from Aza, Gaza, Shechem, Tulkarm, Jenin, Hebron. What are they looking for? Sun, water. They're looking for Jewish women. And they find Jewish women. They don't serve in the army. They have money in their pockets. And they find Jewish women. I will tell you that someone in Israel did protest recently against this. He wasn't exactly Jewish. He was the religious head of the Druze, Sheikh Amin Tarif. He complained to the chief rabbi of Haifa that Druze boys are going out with Jewish girls and how come the chief rabbi doesn't say anything? No. For 20 years the chief rabbi said nothing. Out of shame he finally did. I don't know how to get across to you the spiritual destruction of Jews in Israel. So when I announced that we were going to present a motion of, of no confidence, I wrote to the four religious parties, so to speak, in the Knesset, and said to them, how will you vote? You who are members of the coalition, will you raise your hand for Jews, for Judaism, for God, or for your seats in the coalition? Need I tell you how they voted? Need I tell you how they voted? I need not. They're still in the coalition. I don't blame the Arabs. I blame us, the Jews. Without a modicum of self-respect. Without a modicum of self-respect. I want to save a Jewish soul and I want to save the Jewish body. Not a week goes by that the Jew is not murdered in Israel inside the Jewish state. Two weeks ago, three Jews were murdered on the same day. And most of you don't even know about that. A young couple murdered outside Beit Shemesh in the nature preserve. The same day, a, a third Jew, a young Jew, murdered in Migdalemic in the north. Every week, another funeral. For this we came home? For this we came home to Zion? I tell you that Jews today are afraid in Israel. Jews are afraid to let their children play in the streets at night. We left Minsk and we left Pinsk and we came to Israel and we built Minsk and Pinsk. We left the fear of the exile and supposedly came to create a proud Jewish state. No fear. Jewish pride and Jewish strength. What are we talking about? There's no Jewish pride or Jewish strength. We were afraid. There is fear. Jews today are afraid to go through the old